Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Monday, October 3rd, 2016's council meeting. Uh, please, if you have a cell phone, please turn it off and we'll call this meeting to order. We'll start with a moment of silence to be observed, please. Thank you. Pledge allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilmember Barnes. Here. Reed. Here. Brown. Decker. Here. Krause. Here. French. Here. Mayor Domingo. Here. Thank you. Uh, Mayor and Council members' comments? Yes, Andy. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, just want the folks to know uh, in the community of Albion that uh, had conversations with the project manager of both the hotel project and the 101 North Superior project. Uh, the latest news we have is that uh, site preparation for the hotel will begin on October 11th. Um, so they'll be digging out the foundation and getting that started. Uh, the 101 building is, is running along. Uh, there's an event, uh, homecoming weekend, which is the weekend of the 14th and 15th uh, of October. There'll be an event uh, outside of the building. Uh, the furniture will be arriving as early as next week and the week after. So we're hoping that that building will be done before the end of the month. Uh, there's some permitting that will have to be done and a final cleaning and inspection by, by folks. Um, but we're hoping that we'll be in by the end of October. Uh, just to remind everyone, the 101 North Superior Building is a community college collaboration project space. So if organizations or individuals would like to have meetings in that building or would like to bring folks together for programming, uh, please feel free to get in touch with me uh, and uh, because I will be managing that building uh, during this first year. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I'd like to extend heartfelt condolences to our city attorney, Colin Harkin, for the passing of his father. And welcome back, Colin. And all, I'd like to thank the uh, people who were responsible for the dinner for uh, our officer. Uh, that, that was beautiful. Cheryl and I attended the, the homecoming, and uh, it was really nice. To, and it was really beautiful to see all those families uh, at, at that barn. And thank you all for participating and preparing the food. Yes, Colin. Uh, I just wanted to tell the council I'm pleased to report that uh, Office successful, was successful on uh, defending an appeal um, from an individual that had been responsible for a series of, of thefts uh, uh, in the city uh, um, here in Albion, and um, he had also uh, uh, committed similar offenses in Kalamazoo County and Jackson County. And I think as a result of this uh, success in our appeal, um, this uh, uh, recidivist thief has now been. Okay, if there are no more, we'll move on to presentations. The Saul Grant smoke testing results from Jeff Wingard. Thank you, Mayor Domingo. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm here this evening to give you all an update on our SAW grant activities and uh, schedule to date, and specifically the smoke testing results that uh, we performed earlier this year. Um, I think you have in your packets about seven sheets of the uh, mm -hmm. individual locations that uh, we found uh, during our smoke testing activities. And I'll, I'll start with page one that's uh, titled Storm Cat <coughs> Basins and Brates. Um, we got about 30 of those. And those are uh, going to be high priority um, to get those disconnected. Um, to give you a little explanation of what we did out there, we had a, a smoke testing machine, which is basically a lawnmower with a big fan on the bottom of it. And that gets inserted in the top of a manhole. We, we pop open the cover, put that in there, and turn that on. It, it pressurizes the sewer system about 3 to 4 PSI, so it's low pressure but it also pushes smoke down into the, in the sanitary sewer system. And what we do is we look for smoke coming out of the ground, either at other manholes, uh, 
catch basins, which shouldn't be connected. That's where the storm water is supposed to be going. Um, clean outs, anywhere we see smoke is a potential area where storm water is getting into the sanitary sewer system and you don't want that. So um, roughly uh, 30 catch basins were found of smoke coming out of them, um, which is not a good thing. Um, it's, it's impractical to go through and, and fix all those 30 locations right now, um, but what we can do is use this information for planning in the future so when you have, say, a road project in that area, you might be replacing water main, you might be replacing some other infrastructure, then you can go ahead and, and disconnect those catch basins from the sanitary sewer and reconnect them to the storm sewer where they should be. So it's a, it's a really good planning tool. Uh, moving to the next category, um, sanitary cleanouts and vents. Um, those are less problematic uh, than the first category. Those are mostly uh, six inch cleanouts that are coming to the surface, usually behind the sidewalk or right up next to a house. And it's basically an access point where you can inspect and clean out the sanitary sewer. Most of these are just those risers where a cap has been either broken off by a lawnmower. Um, you know, over time those things kind of degrade and go missing. Sometimes they walk away, that, those sorts of things. They, they typically don't allow very much storm water down into them because they're usually sticking up out of the ground a little ways. But you do want to get those capped off. Um, Again, it's not a real high priority, but uh, it's something that the, the city should look at. Those can be a little trickier because they're either behind the sidewalk or right up by a house, so it's typically not city property, it's private property. Um, but the city can go through and at least notify those folks that uh, they have open cleanouts that they should be capped. Uh, moving on to the next category, and this one's a little more problematic are downspouts and roof gutters. Uh, they, they're similar to the cleanouts, um, but this one is where a cleanout actually has a downspout from a roof drain going into it. Uh, so that's directing uh, stormwater off someone's roof directly into the sanitary sewer, and, and that's not a good thing. So uh, those are definitely ones, we found about 14 of those, so those are definitely ones where the city would, you know, should contact those residents and, and tell them that they're not allowed to discharge stormwater into the sanitary sewer. Um, so those downspouts should be disconnected and, and either redirected out in the yard, redirected into a uh, driveway where it can run onto the road or uh, potentially uh, into a storm sewer that they might be able to connect to. Next category is uh, infiltration, I and I. Um, these are mostly uh, manhole castings that might have shifted a little bit over time and they don't have a good seal on the manhole itself, so there's some smoke emanating around those. Uh, those would be mostly ones that the city could take care of. Uh, they're, they're mostly going to be in the right of way. Uh, usually simple fixes, um, but again, if it can't be fixed right away, it's something that the city can use as a planning tool moving forward that when a project happens in an area, it can be uh, identified as a, as a problem in the past and it should be addressed with a, with a project. Uh, we do have some miscellaneous ones on there that didn't really fit into any of the other categories. And the last one, um, is not as much a concern with the city, but it's probably a concern with the actual residences. Uh, there were several, about 13 or so homes that actually had smoke that were enter entering the house. And that can happen a couple different ways. Uh, the first way would be if there are no traps in the plumbing for the house. Um, without a trap, there's, there's no water to stop that smoke from flowing in. If the smoke can flow in, then sewer gas can flow in too. So that's a bit of a health issue and a health hazard. So those. Uh, folks should be notified about that. It could be that there was a trap there, but it was just dried out over time. If you don't use a trap, uh, if you don't use a sink or a floor drain or something like that, those traps dry up. Um, we did uh, notify folks and, and recommended that they do run water in all their uh, fixtures before we did smoke testing, but there could have been some that were, that were missed. So those folks should be notified and at least have a licensed plumber go through the house and to figure out the reason why the smoke was getting in there. So those, uh, that was the results of our smoke <coughs> test. Um, nothing too surprising. Um, most of the communities that we did smoke testing on, you know, we, we find similar results. And you know, for a city this size and age of interest, infrastructure, it, it wasn't too surprising that we found these. Uh, it most importantly is to have this information and to be able to use it in the future um, and, and remedy the situation. With the inside residence, is that something the city can actually require them to upgrade the fix? Well, 
if if it's improper plumbing, then it's a it's, it'd be a code violation. So uh, the the city building inspector would be able to go in there and, and cite them for code violations. If it's simply a dried up trap, then that's uh, it's there's nothing wrong with the plumbing. It just needs to be used periodically so that trap gets filled with water. If there is something wrong, is that something that anyone could get help to get it repaired? Um, well, any licensed plumber can make the repair. Money financially, is there anything that can be done to help them do that financially? Um, that would really be a decision that the city would have to make. Um, I don't know of any public programs that would help folks like that, um, but you folks as a city could talk about maybe lending some assistance financially for those situations. Typically, the fixes would not be very expensive. Um, you know, say if there's a you know, a pipe coming up from the basement to say a kitchen sink and instead of a trap there's just a straight pipe. Well, to buy a, you know, a trap is, you know, $15 at Home Depot or whatever and maybe a half an hour's worth of work from a plumber. So we're not talking high dollar fixes okay. normally. Um, <coughs> the only potential high dollar fix could be as if say there's a floor drain in the basement and you have to actually remove some concrete to get down in there to install a trap. Thank you. Thank you. Right, right. Sewer gases would be yes, and that's why you would you would want them if, for these residences that did experience smoke in the house that you would want to take those and have a look at them, mm -hmm. and then see why the smoke was coming in. If it was just a dried out trap, then you just make sure you you know, pour a bucket of water in there once a month, and that'll solve the problem. But if there's not a trap and if there's just a straight pipe, then that's a, a straight conduit from the sanitary sewer out in the road into that individual house. So you'd want to get that remedied. Andy? Um, I noticed a couple of, of places where <clears throat> you get smoke coming out of a foundation, coming uh, in, along joints in concrete and a sidewalk. Uh, that sounds a lot more expensive and or structural, that there's a sewer pipe that's got a crack and now you're draining sewer liquids perhaps into the ground around that chip broken joint. It's, it's possible. Some of these were on properties that there weren't structures anymore, it was vacant properties, so um, it, it's hard to tell. You're, you're probably not uh, discharging sewage into the ground because it's right. not functional. Um, but if there was a, uh, a, ever to try to reuse that sewer service, you'd really want to take a look at that uh, entire I was, thinking of, I was thinking of the Alvin College bookstore and the, the Football stadium. Yeah, those are being used. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. So those those are certainly ones we want to maybe investigate a little bit further. It could be it's uh, just an old sewer service that has you know pipe joints that mm -hmm. maybe uh, you know loosened over time or been misaligned, and, and okay. that smoke was able to come to the surface. Or they didn't plug it when they were supposed to. That, that can happen <laughs> too. Yes. What, what does that mean? A lot of t when they tear these houses and stuff down, those things are all supposed to be plugged and capped oh, and see. everything I else. See. Okay. And if somebody doesn't go inspect that, right. you would never know that until, until you did right. done right. something like that. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yes. Excuse me, there's a gentleman, uh, John Tracy. John Tracy, director of uh, planning, building, and planning. Uh, yeah, on the houses that are tore down, they were actually plugged at the foundation. Uh, not out towards the street, so it's very possible. Some of the old orange bird that we have in places that have been uh, problems for a number of years for various uh, yeah, yeah. be in there or other, but they are they are capped, they are checked before they fold it. Okay. Uh, any more smoke testing questions? Yes. Where's Waterborne Drive? Where's I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Where's Waterborne Drive? 907 Waterborne Drive. What page are you on? Um, mine's not number. Neither is mine. Um, the miscellaneous? It'd be one, two, three, four, about three quarters of the way down right after Albion and Charles Street. Okay. Um, we're in the process of putting together a map oh, yeah. that okay. actually shows all these locations. I've lived your whole life. I've never heard of that street. That That's why I've asked it. piqued my curiosity, too, so I'll go back to the and I'll check on that one. So, um, well, you answered all of my questions. At least now we know we have to get reports and things out to people that, that have done that. And... Uh, uh, we have enough work cut out for ourselves yeah, by the looks of right. things. But all in all, actually, I guess 
It looks like a lot, but I would think for as old as a lot of this is and everything else, I think we've done quite well. Yeah, I, like I said, the, the, the key ones are those storm catch basins and grates. You really want to keep an eye on those. Right. And try to get those re, you know, fixed and switched over you know, sooner rather than later because those are going to be significant uh, uh, amounts of storm water that are going to be right. in, wow. included into the, the sanitary sewer system. The cleanouts themselves are kind of oh, minor. It's a company. It's out on Bert, corner of Birdstein Drive and okay. Austin, past McAuliffe Park on the left. Waterborne Environmental Tech. I wonder if that's what they're thinking about. Don't ever. <laughs> it's a big deal. Yeah. But, and, um, and just to give everyone a, a quick little update on some other items as far as the saw grant is concerned. Um, Terra Environmental is, is the company that's going to be coming in and doing the cleaning and televising of the, of the sewers. Uh, they're scheduled to start probably next week. Um, so you should be seeing their trucks in town. They'll have the big uh, Vactor trucks um, that'll be going through and, and cleaning out the lines and then right behind uh, uh, having a camera go through there and televise those. Uh, all that information gets coded and we use that when we start working and putting together our asset management plan on the sanitary sewer system. So um, look for that, look for their trucks here in the next week or so. Um, other than that, the, the overall saw schedule, we're a little more than two years in and it's a three year program. So we're starting to see the, the end is in sight. Most of our heavy lifting is done as far as the field work and the inspections. Uh, the last item would be getting the uh, information from Terra coded information on the sanitary sewers and once we have that in hand which will most likely be you know middle of November or so and then we start packing all that information together and start coming up with the draft asset management plans um, but we'll be rolling those out to you folks in draft form um, beginning of next year say probably uh, February or March and uh, uh, we have to have I know this is a big concern of most of the communities that have the SAW grant is the um, rate study component. Um, you have to address that and we have to have a, a, a resolution into the state six months before the SAW grant um, window is ending. So that is due to the state roughly about March. Um, the big concern was that originally the rate study had to include capital improvement plans within the first five years. That has changed now. Um, they're only looking for your current situation. They're not taking into account any capital improvement plan. So all they're looking for right now is there a current gap between mm. revenues and expenses in the sewer fund, mm. which is a good thing for the communities. Um, bad for planning. Excuse me? But bad for planning. Well, it is. So what we're, what we're doing is <coughs> we're, we're taking a look at your current situation. We're also giving you the five-year capital improvement plan so you can make some choices. You can, you can do the minimal and, and what the DEQ is requesting, or you can be a little more forward thinking and look at potential projects that are gonna be coming down the road in the first you know, one to five years. Um, we cannot do the rate study ourselves because of the Dodd-Frank Act, because we're not licensed financial advisors, so um, we'll be hiring a firm to do that, and uh, they should be on board here in the next month or so, and they're gonna kinda get a jump start um, because we have the, all the information that we need to at least look at your current situation. Once we get a load, look at that, we can determine whether or not there's a current gap. Um, if there is a current gap, then we'll have to start addressing how you're gonna close that gap. And the DEQ requires you at least make 10% progress in the first year of starting to close that gap. Hopefully there's not a gap, and if there's not, then we can start looking at how you wanna address potential capital improvement plans if you wanna see those go into the right study. And, it's in essence a big spreadsheet and you can plug projects in year one, see how it affects rates. You know, you don't like that, okay, let's move it back to year three, see how that affects rates and you can kind of shift and move things around. So that's what we've got coming up. Great, yes. And all of this data will be stored on a GIS map that we get to keep for Correct, ever. everything will be the city owned property when we're all said and done here, including the, the GIS map, um, the asset management plan, it's, it's all yours. Okay, thank you. Videos of the sewers? Exactly, it's that, those videos of the sewers will actually be embedded in the GIS map. Okay. So, you know, say you wanna look at a stretch, <coughs> a stretch of street in the city, 
Uh, you zoom in on it, you, you see the section of sewer. You click on that, there'll be a drop down menu, and one of the uh, potential items on there would be the as built plans or the record drawings. You can click on that, the plans pop up. Another item would be video. You click that, the video pops up. So everything's going to be in, in one location um, to get all the access to the information that we found. Good. Great. Thank Good. you. That's Good. great. Well, sounds great. Great. Are there any further questions? We thank you ever so much. Okay. And we you. appreciate it. Okay. Uh, citizens' comments. Persons addressing the city council shall limit their comments to agenda items only and to no more than five minutes. Proper decorum is required. Are there any items on the agenda that the citizens need to complain or comment on? <coughs> I see none. Moving on to the consent calendar. Consent calendar. Uh, approval of regular council session minutes for September 19th, 2016. So moved. Support. Moved and supported. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed the same. It passes. Items for individual discussion. We'll start off with the city manager's report. Thank you. Mayor and council, you have included in your packet the um, department reports from the finance department, planning, building, and code enforcement, and the assessors. Um, in addition to which, I shared with you um, the city manager's report. And a couple things I, I want to bring to your attention. We had an absolutely outstanding big read parade and a festival this Saturday. It was great. Uh, I especially want to thank um, Elijah for the work he does with the drum line and the dancers. They were fantastic. So we have a lot to be proud of and who would have thought there would be fire breathing people and um, people on stilts chasing kids around the column. It was a fun day for everyone. So we really enjoyed that, um, that opportunity to get the big read off to a big start. And the book is very popular. We've gone through two, um, two rounds of um, our stock in City Hall. So the book is very popular and we're looking forward to the, um, the conversations around that. Um, also want to remind you that the Planning Commission is moving forward with the, um, the comprehensive plan recommendations and they will have the public hearing on November 28th and we have scheduled the, um, your meeting following that, I believe is that Wednesday. The AmeriCorps is, um, the young people there are exceptional and we're very thrilled to have them on board, especially the ones working with neighborhood stabilization and economic development. They have been coordinating the town hall meetings and right now they're in the final planning stages for a discussion in regard, with the neighborhood in regards to the future vision and use for the Dal Riffle property. Right now we're looking at the third week of October, so they're just trying to finalize um, those dates and times. They're, we're planning on a morning one as well as an evening discussion so as many people as possible can participate. And they're working with um, daycare so that um, daycare will be available for parents who want to bring their children in order to participate. The EDC search, well, Peggy Sent has officially retired. I, I believe that they are in the final stages. The board is um, um, making their selection and hopefully the new person will be on board by the end of the month. So it depends on how those talks go. And the next town hall meetings um, are scheduled for October 13th at the Albion Community B Building on Watson and October 27th at Lewis Chapel. Last week we had the um, joint study session with the Downtown Development Authority in regards to downtown parking. Um, it was um, very enlightening. Uh, there was uh, some of the recommendations included maximizing the sense of safety with our existing parking, including additional lighting, perhaps cameras, and to have them aligned so that people can identify where the parking is, uh, where they should be parking, as well as signage so that people um, who are coming into town know that these are available, especially the public parking spaces. So we'll be working with um, both the um, Redevelopment Ready Community, so the MEDC, as well as um, Michigan State University Extension in regards to developing the update to our downtown development plan. Had our second meeting today with, uh, I think it's called Merit, in regards to having a fiber network community-wide. 
and actually having a loop, especially for the businesses, but having a, a system in place so that actually the households can also connect to it. And it's a part of a larger system that right now, I think it's going to actually go at least from Marshall to Jackson, but even from Battle Creek to Jackson. Um, so we're really excited about that and the opportunity for us <coughs> to get online with that, which would give us um, greater um, capacity in terms of speed for our infrastructure as well as the possibility for some cost savings by having the voice over internet system in place. <coughs> Consumers Energy today dropped off a check for $3,800 for the easement that's going across the front of the building and um, we're especially appreciative of that because they normally don't pay for an easement for a service but um, we had fruitful conversations. And we need to, we received the bids for the single trash hauler. Um, we will need to contact all of you to schedule a special study session so that we can discuss that. Um, there was a, um, a concern that was raised by one of them in regards to the process, so we'll have to address that as well. But I, we do need to get in touch with you on how you might want to proceed relative to um, at least receiving <coughs> information and deciding what, if any, are the next steps. And I included um, some upcoming events at the bottom of the page, and one I want to point out is Wednesday with Councilmember Lynn Reed. And there will be a demonstration of the athletic equipment at Holland Park that's especially for <coughs> seniors. And you have people who are demonstrating other than your city manager, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to be sure. <laughs> okay. And I think I sent you an email um, from the chamber. The Detroit Aglow is um, scheduled for November 29th right now. So if you want to mark that on your calendars, and especially if you plan on participating in that parade. And the NAACP Freedom Fund Banquet is this Saturday, October 8th at 6 p.m. at Baldwin Hall. Um, Citizens to Beautify Albion's Potluck is tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. at First Pres Presbyterian Church. And there's going to be a, um, a policy discussion in regards to mental health reform. Currently, there are some discussions in the state right now relative to privatizing community mental health instead of it being through our present community-based system. So that raises some concerns and um, Dr. Harry Bonner had noted that in South East Michigan, the Oakland County area, that they were having some discussions in regards to that to one, get people to understand that these changes are being discussed and two, to get them to be active in advocating um, for what's in the best interest of local residents. So that's going to be held here in Albion at the college on October 12th at 7, 10 p.m. And the lead task force, which council member Cheryl Cross and I, as well as um, John, have been attending the meeting. So they're planning on a public discussion and press conference uh, to build a l awareness in regards to lead abatement, especially for the homes and properties and how to get testing for children and there's another component, um, inspections. So, and Media Wolf also attends those, those meetings as well. So right now, the event looks like it's going to be October 27th at 6.30 at the Cool Center in Battle Creek. So if you want to include that on your calendars. And that includes, my, oh, one uh, recreation department. Um, they did submit their information, but I didn't, it was stuck in our spam, so I didn't <coughs> include it in the report. But the Mother's Song, Son Dance is coming up, which is always a very popular event. Also, um, we are in discussions with the Marshall Public Schools relative to the use of the building on Watson Street for community activities, especially after school and weekend, um, as well as um, morning swims for um, people who are at home, which is mostly seniors. Uh, so we're having those discussions on how we can make use of this facility on an ongoing basis. So in fact, we're having our next follow-up meeting this week. and. Um, Larry Williams um, this past weekend had the first, which was hopefully a part of a series of basketball events for young people in partnership with um, Milt Barnes, um, who's been coming into town to start some recreational programming that will also have some additional um, reinforcement for young people in terms of you know, character building. So that first one was this weekend, so we're really excited to have Mr. Barnes back in town and working with young people. And that concludes my report. Any questions? 
Uh, future agenda items? Yes. Uh, I'm assuming that Austin Avenue will, will be coming up. It's in the minutes from the last meeting. Uh, um, if you would, John is here and he can address that. It's also mentioned in his written report as well. Yeah, uh, 600 block Boston Avenue. Uh, we've had some things that have been uh, a plus and a few things that have been a minus. One of the buildings that is owned by an uh, individual who lives in Hawaii um, did adhere to uh, bring it in compliance as far as uh, the building being fenced off and mowed and such. But unfortunately, they did not show up in July or August uh, here in Albion to proceed with uh, arranging for the demolition of the property. So uh, that's one that will be um, taken legal action on. Uh, we have another one uh, in the 600 block uh, that we've extended uh, several times on and uh, appears that we will wind up taking legal action on that too. Uh, part of the holdup for, for part of this is uh, we have one building that's been um, talked about using for um, various types of um, community use and such. And the parking, uh, which is limited on the street. Um, we do have the EDC property across the street that uh, runs the whole block. It's three different uh, parcels, uh, which we've looked at before to turn into parking. Uh, bottom line is is that um, we have to come up with money to do that so uh, and that means paving or or uh, you know either asphalt or concrete so that's kind of a hindrance at this point in time to help uh, move some of the properties along there that have uh, have some interest so uh, other than that um, we're um, doing what we can with what we have well, you know, a little bit of my research has shown that one of the um, property owners recently bought some more property in the city of Albion, and we had uh, collectively given this owner some relief due to certain tangibles where they couldn't get things done. So I'm, I'm finding a disappointment that they would go out and buy more property when they have this one in this area and not taken care of. That just lets me know that you're doing what you need to do to move forward in that property on Austin to uh, rectify the problem. My excitement is that uh, the, the Malibu, old Malibu Iron site, the federal government has stated to the city of Albion that you know, we know that it's contaminated and that mm -hmm. if we found a viable business to move in, they would clean it up. And my thinking is that would make that block of Austin Avenue <coughs> more attractive as a business endeavor for people. So if we could get something to come in there, and I'm sure there may be some things on the table that you and I know that you know we can't share. Um, I think that that part of Austin Avenue needs to constantly be worked toward bringing it up to code so that if we do get something headed toward that Mount Iron, that right. over there can become a viable business. There's, there's, there's a few things on Austin Ave out that way, not only in the 600 block and, and also uh, further down in the 700, 800, 900 um, that we need to address and look at. Uh, we may need to make a few changes. Uh, that property was uh, some time ago designated good parts of it as M1 for light industry. And... Um, not necessarily all the property that that encounters is large enough for use for along those lines, uh, which has also brought up a problem with individuals who, individuals who um, have what's considered non-conforming homes since that was passed uh, at some point in time, uh, which raises a problem for them in selling a house or sometimes getting insurance because under the zoning ordinance, if your house is hit by a tornado or damaged by fire and it's more than 50% than, uh, than what it would cost current 
value to replace, it's not allowed to be replaced. So some mortgage companies and some insurance companies, quite often we get calls from that will not deal with those properties that those people own. Um, so it, we need to look at uh, what we have out there, what we don't have out there, and uh, also use that for any ch other changes that we make for commercial. Well, my desire is to bring in a workforce and to have economic growth in that area. because It was once a boom at another mm -hmm. time, and now that we're really becoming a progressive album, um, that's an ideal spot. Thank you. Okay. If I just may say one other thing. Uh, in this report, it has basically the 22 or 23 properties that... Um, the county has either already had demoed or is in the process. Um, just wanted to add to that that I just received another 10 um, applications for demolition permits, so uh, they're well underway, and uh, I foresee that hat being uh, closed up here before uh, winter time. So, you're doing a good job. Motion to excuse absent council members. So moved. Um, is that going to be a roll call? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed the same. Mr. Brown is excused. Citizens comments. Persons addressing the city council shall limit their comments to no more than five minutes. Proper decorum is required. Are there any citizens comments this evening? Please state your name and address please. Chad Bosley, 1021 Burr Oak Street. Um, it's come to my attention that um, you guys are familiar with where Brooks Foundry used to be and where the old landfill used to be. All of them residents in that area are, have unsafe drinking water coming out of their taps. They have very high uh, iron levels and very high magnesium levels or manganese levels. Um, I have copies here from the, uh, the Calhoun County Public Health Department and also from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, the uh, the lead level or the, the levels in the water. Um, I would I would like to ask the I know if I had a neighbor that had unsafe drinking water coming out of their tap, it would be important to me to to make sure that they could get it. Um, one of the one of the highest properties in uh, in this area that that. The, the water tests have been performed on is Ed Haas's company out there at uh, Haas Trucking. Uh, he has a 4.0 level. It says from the, the uh, <coughs> health department here, uh, iron level is greater than 2.0. This level is higher than the health-based drinking criteria of 2.0 milligrams per liter. This level was established to prevent iron overload in the body that can cause tissue damage for certain individuals who have been afflicted with an inherent condition called hemochromatosis. And concentrations above 2.0, it is recommended that people consuming this water have been diagnosed with hemochromatosis, consult the <clears throat> physician regarding their use of the water. It also, they can't even wash their clothes in the water because of the manganese levels. It's discoloring the water so bad that, that it's just, it stains their clothes, just trying to wash their clothes. I mean, it's like we have third world countries right outside of our city limits. And I, I think that this should be brought up as a future agenda item, if, see if the, uh, do a feasibility study on running water lines down there. They have, already have septic systems, so it's not like we would even have to run the sewer lines, just the, the water lines to provide fresh water for these people. When was that report done? This is 2015. There's been water main out there since Brooks or since... Uh, nah, he's... Okay. Stop right there. <laughs> Back when the McGraws and all of that, they ran water main out there. They solved all those problems by running water lines and everything else there. Out there, they're all tapped into the city water out there at this point. On Michigan Avenue. On Michigan Avenue. Not Erie. Why would we be on Erie? Because that's where the landfill and the backside of Brooks Foundry was at. 
Um, so all them properties on and that has. First of all, we're taking care of the landfill, along with a couple other companies that did that. We've done that now for 15 years, 20 years. Uh, that's all been taken care of. There's test wells and everything else out there. Uh, the first contamination came from McGraw Edison that was out there when they had the uh, overflow providers out there that were, and matter of fact, I'm not so sure that the filters still aren't running. And at that point in time, they were all tested. Our water main was ran out Michigan Avenue. And, that's, and that was at their expense for us to do that. So if there's any more contamination out there from that level or anything else, now it turns into a county, state level, you know, for us to proceed with any more than what we've already done. Hmm. But the people that were contaminated at that time have been taken care of with city water. So How far out does the water main run out there on Michigan I, Avenue? Well, I know it's this side of Jackson County because that falls into a whole different category out there. Uh, right now, I think it runs, I know it runs past the uh, 425 agreement on Michigan Avenue. I'm not sure where it is stubbed at this point, but it took care of any of the residents that were in that contaminated area. I know, I know it goes out, I do believe, past Orchard Knoll, which is one road beyond uh, Orchard Drive. I think they've got taken care of. So I can't tell you right to the point, and I don't see anybody here that can at this point. But okay. I know down Michigan Avenue that was all taken care of. And I think, like I said, the test wells and things like that we can find uh, that we've done at the dump, or, you know, the X dump or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but that was all taken care of at that point. So. Um, but yes, I, I understand your point, you know, but like I said, now you're getting out of the city, we're getting into the county and different areas. So, but yes, if their levels are like that, they should have been raised, you know, from their wells and things like that. So, yes. And seeing we're on live TV and this type of question comes up, I don't want any hysterical report. I personally have gone <coughs> to our wells and uh, I've had our city officials uh, Jim Livingston and I, and the city manager, just met and we talked about our qualifications from the state, our licensing, and the level of certification we need to send the water to. I went through each and every pool in our, well, I, I call it up by Star mm -hmm. Tomo Well, and they showed me how each section of the chemicals go in, what chemicals go in, and how it has to, it's a, a check behind the check and the quality comes from last the check. So we do and have safe, clean drinking water. I and <coughs> Every, every city or municipality, anybody who has over 25 people on a well system have quarterly, quarterly checks on the water. Okay. Um, properties like these here that, that I provide Joe with the paperwork on, they, them are only yearly tests because there's only one person on a well. It's like Amerton Village is on a, on a community well, and right. theirs gets tested also in right. uh, every quarter. Right. But well, I'm definitely speaking for the citizens of Alabama right. and our water system. Yes, Andy. So, so Mr. Bozzi, I would say that the next thing for your property owners that have those levels, they should probably talk to the township supervisor that in which they live exactly. about their concerns. Is yep. that correct? That's the next. And you have to be next. careful out there because that's divided between Sheridan, Sheridan Albion and Township, Township, and then you get into Jackson, Jackson County, County. Right. Right. and Parma Township. So, yeah. so I think that you know, if yep. you think about creative ways moving forward, they talk to their township or county. If, if a number of them decide that they want to be on Albion water, then that, that is possible, but it would be at sure. their expense to do so. Um, and that would be a big project, am I correct? Exactly. Right. What do you so, think it would cost to run water to the, uh, no clue? No. I, I wouldn't even want to, <laughs> wouldn't even want to say. I can't remember back when they ran that. 429 was uh, no. the sewers and, they, and, right. and it was combined. Uh, that's already out there. But on Michigan Avenue, I know when they found the contamination with I, with McGraws and stuff right. like that, I can't even begin to tell you what the cost was. But I'm sure uh, Jim Leonardson can yeah. probably find that at that point. But uh, there is no, there's always the perspective that Albion can take water to you, but it's going to be at an expense. Right. That, you know, the city's not gonna, you know, you know, pick up. Yeah. Uh, that's always been a problem. I know Amerton Village was one of them, but I think they just got a new well, if I'm not mistaken. 
uh, because they are, you know, under their own right there, but they all have septic tanks as well. But like I said, we did run water to those that were affected by that at that point in time. I don't believe Erie Street was at that time included in that. Because well, I've got Hudson's records got coming from all the way back 20 years on that property, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more research on it. And That's fine. It's been, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, she's, I've got a lady over there in the Department of Community Health, or the Michigan, or the Calhoun County Health Department mm -hmm environmental division that's bring going through the old records sure. and, and she's uh, faxing me all the all the records on it how many properties are out there on Erie only six okay. uh, it, hold on I take that back because you have the water cuts off at Clark Street at the school on Correct. Erie right so you've got them houses that and first row down yeah. you've got houses you, I, there's maybe four or five down there. Mm -hmm. Then you've got <laughs> six properties down farther between the landfill and Brooks Foundry property. Right. Right. Okay. About ten out there. Yeah. yeah, so about okay. 10. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? If I see none and I don't see any, I will ask for an adjournment. So, so moved. Support. Moved and supported. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed the same. Thank you all very much. Have a good evening and be safe.